Fasteners, like bolts and screws, can break if you tighten them with too much force. In other situations, the metal threads into which you're turning a fastener could be pulled out. You might also need to be sure that the fastener is tightened to a specific amount of force. We typically refer to this action as torquing the fastener. You torque the fastener to create a consistent amount of stretch in it that will lock it in place and keep it from coming loose. For fasteners that need to be torqued, there's a kind of socket wrench called a torque wrench. This works just like a socket wrench, but here, between the wrench head and the handle, is a clutch device that senses force. You turn the handle to set the torque value that will activate the clutch. When you reach the correct torque, the clutch lets go and stops turning the fastener. These look robust and heavy, but they're actually quite delicate instruments and need to be handled carefully. Now there are dozens of different torque wrench designs. Here we're dealing with one of the most common, the click type torque wrench. To use it, unlock the handle by turning the handle release knob. Above the handle on the barrel, you'll see the torque values, usually inscribed in foot-pounds, meter kilograms, and newton meters. These are the major settings. Each clockwise rotation of the handle increases the major setting by 10 foot-pounds. Here on the tip of the handle is another set of numbers. These are the minor settings. Each mark on this part of the handle represents one foot-pound. To set a value, turn the handle until you reach the required torque value. For example, we need to tighten this fastener to 55 foot-pounds. Turn the handle clockwise until the edge reaches the 50 mark on the barrel. The major is now set to 50 foot-pounds. Now slightly rotate the handle clockwise so that the 5 marking is aligned with the marking on the barrel. This sets the minor to 5 foot-pounds. With the major set to 50 and the minor set to 5, our wrench is now set to 55 foot-pounds. Turn the handle release to lock the settings in place and double check the major and minor settings to make sure they didn't change when you tightened the knob. Slowly tighten the fastener until you hear it click. That click tells you that the clutch inside the handle has released and the fastener is now torqued to the correct value. Turn the wrench until it clicks again. That's it, you're done. You turn the wrench slowly to make sure you hear the first click the second it occurs. The application of smooth, consistent torque ensures that the fastener is correctly tightened. To get the best use out of a torque wrench, be careful not to drop or strike the wrench as this will seriously affect the calibration. And never use a cheater bar on a torque wrench. You can seriously damage the clutch mechanism inside. If you need to apply more force to the wrench, use a bigger wrench. Avoid getting liquid of any kind on the wrench. If it does get wet, wipe the liquid off immediately. Put the wrench away when you're done with it. If you're going to put the wrench away for an extended period of time, say a week or more, set the major and minor values to the lowest values you can set above zero. If you set it to zero, you release most of the tension on the spring inside, causing the wrench to potentially drift out of calibration. Likewise, if you leave it set to the last value you used, the tension on the spring can cause it to weaken and shorten the life of the wrench. Torque wrenches need regular recalibration. At the Haas factory, we label each tool with the calibration date. But remember, if you drop it or bang it around, or if it doesn't seem correct, get it recalibrated before you use it again. It takes some time to get comfortable with using a torque wrench, but with practice, you'll soon find that working with this critical assembly tool becomes second nature.